San Diego City Council will be down one member until voters in the 4th District elect a new representative, but thousands of residents within the newly redrawn district may not get to vote for the new City Council member. San Diego Council President Todd Gloria joins me now to explain the problem and some possible solutions. Councilman Gloria, thanks so much for uh, returning. Coming back, talking to us about this. Why will an estimated 5,000 voters, registered voters, from uh, Redwood Village and Rolando Park be excluded in this uh, special election? Well, our municipal code uh, uh, allows for the filling of vacant positions like we have in District 4 using the old uh, lines of the council district. And so we have had two unusual events happen at once. We've had redistricting, which happens only every 10 years, and the resignation of a council member, which happens very infrequently, happen at the same time. And it's created a circumstance where our municipal code really results in kind of an unfair situation where these uh, neighborhoods will be left out of the special election under the current code. Now that code is sort of takes a perfect storm, as you said, it, it was actually uh, voted in in 1999, I believe. And what was the logic behind it? You know, we're still researching that. Obviously, this was something we stumbled upon because of these two unusual events happening at the same time. Uh, it's my understanding that it was at some direction of the state of California. Uh, municipal code typically can be changed by the city council, which I would be interested in doing. Um, but of course, the the uh, causing it by uh, to come about via the state may uh, may make it difficult for us to do that. We're still researching that and hope to have some answers in time for Monday's hearing when we'll vote on this matter. And you talked to the city uh, attorney about this. Correct. This is a legal matter, so we were consulting closely with our city the attorney. Uh, I've asked them to come to Monday's hearing when we will vote on this with a number of options for the council, hopefully all of them legal, uh, and to do what we can to uh, best fill this position uh, hopefully quickly. Now I believe that you have 90 days in order to uh, find a replacement, uh, but so for, for the election mm -hmm. actually. Uh, what happens in the, that 90 days. You have several candidates. Well, we have uh, a number of candidates who have filed uh, their intentions uh, with the city clerk's office. We imagine more um, before the deadline. Uh, in the meantime, though, we will uh, we'll be uh, operating business as usual in the Council District 4 office. I'll be supervising the staff uh, that had previously worked for Councilmember Young. They'll continue to be there for citizens who need assistance, uh, and we'll make sure that things are taken care of uh, in this interim period. You're going to be overseeing the office. Will you be mm -hmm. voting on District 4 issues? No, I will not. We will have an eight-member council, uh, and we will vote uh, as we have previously, we, you know, we recently expanded to nine. Uh, so we'll just be uh, an eight-member council until the ninth person joins us. We expect uh, sometime between March and May. Well, because I understand there's nearly a dozen candidates already uh, to fill this position, how much is a special election going to cost? Well, that's un unclear at the moment. It could be more than $300,000. What we're doing right now is working with the state of California, which also has a special election in, in basically the same area. We hope to consolidate those elections and thereby saving San Diego taxpayers about $100,000. Naturally, if I've given the opportunity to save the city some money, I'm going to take that opportunity. Um, but right now, uh, we're working with the state to try and make that happen. Now, Rolando and uh, Redwood Village voters are actually known for their political activism. Yeah. They're a very active group. Uh, they say this is not fair. They feel disenfranchised. What do you want to say to them? Well, I would agree with them. I don't think this is fair at all. When it was brought to my attention, I just couldn't believe it. Um, but it's what we were dealing with, and that's why we're consulting with our attorneys to see if there's any other way that we can legally uh, accomplish uh, what we want, which is full enfranchisement. Um, but again, we're presented with a very odd set of circumstances that may not allow what should happen, which is full enfranchisement, uh, occur in this particular case. If there's any other way to do it, though, I'll make sure it happens, but I don't know that there will be. One little last piece of the puzzle is that redrawn lines also mean that voters in District 9, who used to be in District 4, yeah. actually get to vote for a representative on for District 4, even though they're not living yeah. there anymore. Explain that. Well, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, you'll have people who will literally vote for someone who will never serve them a day uh, in their entire tenure. Uh, again, it's a function of this municipal code, which may or may not be a function of the state, and we're going to do our best to address it. You know, I've lived through my own redistricting experience. My own home was drawn out of my council district, forcing me to move, so I understand how impactful redistricting can be. This is yet another way that it happens. It deserves to be fixed. It remains to be seen if we can fix it in time for the District 4 special election. All right, we're going to know more on Monday, City Council. Uh, President Todd Gloria, thanks so much for explaining this to us. Thank you, Peggy.